Hello everyone, this is Vikram and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will understand how to install Docker Desktop for Mac M1. So we are already in the web page, which is docs.docker.com slash desktop. So basically Docker Desktop is a graphical user interface that lets you manage containers, various images directly from your machine. So if you want to create a container, you can directly uh, create it using the GUI or else you can use Docker CLI as well. In case if you're just getting started with Docker, the best thing that you can do is interact with the containers, images, etc. through desktop, uh, Docker desktop graphical user interface. Now, if you scroll to the bottom, here you'll have instructions to install desktop for Mac. So it comes in two different versions, one for uh, uh, Mac with Apple Silicon, the other is for Intel chip. Since I have uh, M1 chip uh, Mac, I'll click on this link. So in my case, I already downloaded it. So what I'll do is I'll simply double click on this DMZ file that should install Docker. So let's drag the Docker icon into the applications. So this should actually move your Docker to the applications folder. So once copying is completed, so you can uh, download your, uh, delete your download file and also you need to eject Docker from the locations. And uh, once it is installed, so you can open your applications and then click on the Docker icon. This should start your Docker. Since this is downloaded from the internet, maybe your Mac will ask you whether to open this file or not. So let's click on open. So as it opens, you will be able to see one more icon on the top, which will show you the current status of your Docker desktop. Currently it is in the starting state. And uh, if you want to sign in into your Docker Hub account, you can click on sign in here so that you can see all your custom images directly in the uh, desktop UI. And uh, some settings, learning center, Docker Hub, documentation related to Docker, everything will be given here. And if you want to restart your Docker desktop, you can do it and to quit, you can uh, quit uh, from here. So currently what we'll do is, uh, you know, Docker desktop is running. So let's click on dashboard. So this should open the um, Docker desktop graphical user interface. Now you can sign in to your Docker Hub account. And, uh, you know, this is the settings menu. So where you can, uh, you know, automatically start Docker desktop when you start the uh, machine. By selecting this option you have the themes here and if you go to the resources you can set how many cpus and how much memory uh, swap etc will be used by this docker desktop and then if you have proxies you can set proxies to access um, the other repositories file sharing and then you can also enable kubernetes in case if you want to use docker desktop for mac to uh, create kubernetes pods and all that stuff you have the extensions, updates, everything. So what we'll do is let's uh, go to uh, the Docker desktop by clicking on cancel here. So from here you will see the containers, images, volumes, whatever resources that you create inside your machine. Okay, if you want to understand what are containers and what are images, you can directly click on these links to understand. But uh, you know, I think you cannot create containers from here maybe. So what we will do is we will try to create containers from the CLI itself. So what we'll do is, uh, you know, we will open Mac terminal. And now if you do Docker PS here, we don't have any Docker containers running. And also if you look for Docker images, so we have one mini cube image. I think I uh, downloaded it long back. Uh, what we'll do is we'll try to run an Nginx container using Docker run. So the name of the container I'm going to use as web and then I can use port mapping to map 80 port on the machine to 80 port of the container and the image I would be using is nginx latest and uh, I'll also um, you know start it in the d1 mode by giving hyphen d flag so what this should do is uh, first it will see whether docker image is downloaded onto this machine if it is not there it will first pull the image from docker hub and then it will start the container. So 
so once the image is pulled you can verify whether the image is uh, downloaded or not using docker images and then do docker ps to see all the running containers now what we'll do is we'll go to the docker desktop and now you can see here one container is running with the image nginx latest the status is running if you want to see only the running containers you can see the toggle here and uh, here the total cpu usage of the container so the last started is 22 seconds ago so there are certain actions if you want to stop this container you can click on this so if you want to delete this container you can do this and uh, this is the port mapping so if you click on the port mapping so automatically it will load the url and it will display the nginx web page and if you see the more actions here you can see the details so this is just like a docker container um, um, you know inspection so where you can use uh, uh, we can see the logs inspect mount you can exec into the container or see the file system and the statistics so the first tab is logs which will basically show you the logs uh, what i can do is uh, you know i can refresh this page multiple times now if you go to the docker desktop for mac you will see four different four to five logs right and then inspect so this is just like a docker um, container inspect command so where you can see the complete details of the container like the image the cmd or the entry point used um, all that like the log path the port mapping etc i think you can also directly use these buttons uh, to go to the respective sec uh, section of this inspect let's say i wanted to see the network then if you click on the networks it will take you to the networks part like if you want to see the image it will uh, you can click on this image tab it will go to this image uh, section and bind mounts so currently we did not use any volume mounts so that's the reason why it is not showing exec exec means here i can uh, exec into the container the way we actually do is using docker exec command but uh, using docker desktop it will be automatically done now i can see the uh, file system contents okay so in case if i have to uh, go into let's say uh, user share nginx html uh, i can go to this path here i'll have two files index.html and uh, you know 50x.html what i'll do is i'll simply echo a string called hello into this index.html file so this should actually change the the uh, the web page okay so you, all you have to do is you have to refresh this now you can see so we have a new uh, output here that is hello so i can simply exit from uh, or else i don't have to exit it simply i can just go to the other tab so where this will show you the actual file system so if i go to user share nginx and then html index.html you can see it is modified actually i modified it by replacing the content with um, you know with hello string so you can click on this open file editor now you can see here whatever string that we modified it is being shown here so i can also edit it directly from here now this is the cpu and mem usage of the container so currently the container is not using any of the resources you can see here uh, you know an option to stop the container restart and then delete it so let's go back so these are the various options available you can search for the containers or select multiple containers and uh, delete them and also if you click on the images you can see all the images that we uh, have in the machine you can select any image and then uh, you can see various layers okay so it is also doing some static scanning as well and it is also showing the common uh, security issues right and then various packages that are installed in this image and um, so if you already have an image um, you know i can uh, create one more container now if you see here this image is particularly in use because we created one container based on this nginx image now if i um, try to run maybe it will run a new container yes it is run it is going to start a new container so the container name uh, let's make it as test host port because 
uh, the container port is already 80 I'm going to put host port as 9000 so I don't want to use any environment variables or volume uh, binds so let's click on run so this should actually create one more container so if you go to the list of containers now you have one more and uh, the host port is 9000 if you see it will obviously load the default uh, nginx page uh, so now if you want to delete multiple containers all you have to do is select all the containers and then first you can stop them if you need or else you can simply delete them so delete for forever so this should actually delete all the containers so you also have the learning center where you can uh, start creating some sample docker files or run some docker containers and you uh, have the volumes in case if you have created any volumes those will be shown here you can also create the volumes by clicking on the create button now if you want to sign in you can also sign in into your docker hub account so let me um, you know basically log in into my account okay so let's open docker desktop again so if you see here i am currently logged in and if you try to see the images and if you click on hub it's, it will show you all the images that i pushed into the docker hub so there are almost 90 of them i guess and this is the local uh, so where uh, it will have uh, the locally downloaded images so what i can do is i can uh, select any of my image and then i can click on pull so automatically you know the new image will be pulled so you can see in the images so i have this new image which is based on amd64 okay uh, so images may have poor performance so i don't know what this means i'm assuming this is based uh, this is due to the architecture so maybe it runs on the uh, windows uh, i mean the linux containers image may have poor performance or fail okay let's ignore this so this is how you use docker desktop for mac so you also have learning center and then if you go to the extensions i think you'll have other extensions that you can use with docker desktop and uh, yeah that's it so that's it from this video and I'll see you in the next one.